Hey, I am recording this immediately after the previous video, so, um, I am as exhausted as I was in the previous video, and I'm probably gonna misspeak as much, but let's, let's just speedrun, because I, I got a lot to say. Uh, Coyote Fang, the patriarch, um, because it's gendered leader, because I'm original. <laughs> Sorry, it, we're... We're not even a minute in, and I am being sass for no reason. Um, Coyote Fang is great. He becomes a leader at the very, very beginning of River Chasing. Uh, and he, as far as I know in the writing, because I haven't written that far, uh, he stays the uh, patriarch the entire time. And sorry, I just like gasped and choked for no reason. Um, I, I quite enjoy him. I think he, he's kind of cryptic. He's hard to understand, but he's, he's good. He's a good, well-meaning boy. Sorry, I am choking for no reason. Um, enjoy him. I like his little, his appearance. He's great. Moderator time. Bramble Pelt. Um, I talked about him, uh, in the doc video, which... If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Um, I like him. He's the, you know, he's a dark tabby. He's, uh, he, he's a nice guy. Not a lot to say about him that I, you know, haven't said already. I mean, I, th I think he's, I think he's an interesting character, but where I've written, I haven't written a lot of Sky Colony, so everything I have is just, like, notes and no actual, like, characterizations on page yet, so I like him, but mostly the idea of him right now. Um, yeah, he becomes moderator at the very beginning. He has a whole plot that I'm, I think I mentioned, where he gets poisoned. If not, you're hearing it now. Um, next, Sorrel Creek. Talked about him in the doc video as well. I, I like him. He is um, Coyote Fang's dad. Uh, sorry that I keep clearing my throat. I am tired and kind of nervous because I've already recorded this video once and I am trying to keep my anger in. <laughs> I'll tell you why at the end of the video. Um, I think Sorrel Creek is great. I like his name. He's very, uh, he, he's an old man. He's my favorite archetype of old man. And it's that I'm just gonna die on my feet working. Um, and he's just, he's a good dad. He's a, he's a great, he's a great old man. That, that's it. That's <laughs> very basic. Uh, Bracken Ear, the only guardian. Uh, Bramble Pelt was a fellow guardian, but then he leveled up one. And Brackenear is there all alone. I don't have a lot to say about Brackenear. He's pretty average boy. Um, I wrote down in my notes that he's a himbo and very lazy, which makes him not want to be a moderator. And I completely understand that. I get why he wants to stay in camp all day and I approve. My favorite himbo. I think there's only like two himbos in the entire story and I think we need more. His appearance, though, is very pretty. I like- we don't have enough cream-colored cats in Warriors, and that has always kind of made me kind of sad. That's made me kind of sad. I don't know why I stopped saying that sentence. It was a perfectly fine sentence. I just stopped it somewhere in the middle. So, there's a lot of characters who are cream. I don't think Bracken here is related to Coyote Fang. Um, or Sorrel Creek because those two are father and son, but he is also cream, and I enjoy that. I, I think it's just pretty. Um, the sizes of the, the recording also changed. That was a pure accident that happened, um, and it gets fixed, I think, after this one, or slightly after this one. It, it was just a tiny, tiny bit of a stick. Um... Now into the hunters. There are, th again, three hunters. Uh, the only one who has one hunter is Dark Colony, and I'll talk about them soon. 
I promise. It's it's been a very long time. Um, Poppy Petal. I like her appearance. She's great. She. I don't have a, again. I don't have a lot. I haven't explored them a lot. Um, but she is. She likes to be outside. <laughs> that is her whole personality that I have written down. Is that she likes to go on expedition expeditions. She likes to stay outside of the camp for a really long time, and she loves going full speed. Um, you would think she's not a very good hunter because she just likes to run around and be kind of noisy. But she is great. She's very good at her job. And she is the aunt of Doc and Ember, which is great. Uh, speaking of which, we have Snowfoot, who I have mentioned her a lot. She had her whole own episode, and she's in a map part, so that puts her kind of top tier of characters I, <laughs> I know about in this uh, colony. Uh, she is the ex of Thundercry, and she's currently trying to become Doc and Ember's, like, next mom, or, mo like, the mother of their half-siblings, because she wants to have kids with Tawny Spark, and she is making hunting trips real awkward for the rest of them. Um... She was a character that I had written down jokingly in my notes that she was kind of angsty and violent and then I looked back at that and went, why is that there? And then wrote a whole plotline for it. Because I had nothing else going on for me. Um, Tawny Spark. Tawny Spark's great. Um... Tony Spark is the dad of Ember and Doc. I didn't draw him last time because I was still trying to figure out how Dark Ginger worked. And uh, I don't like the shade that I ended up with. I would change that if I could. But too late now. I would, if I could pick the same as Poppy Petal, but I didn't realize at the time that I was drawing this that they were siblings, even though I knew that they were siblings. It's a whole thing. I didn't- I, I wasn't paying attention while I was drawing. <laughs> Which I'll get to. Um, so yeah, he is the one of the other hunters. Poppy Petal is his uh, older sister, different litters. Those two are very close and they love to compete, but Snowfoot as I said, makes it really awkward because she just wants to flirt with Tawny Spark, and Tawny Spark is also kind of a himbo, but not really. Like, he's a. He's kind of a sports jock. He just wants to hunt all the time and do good. Um, and he likes to mess around with his sister, and Snowfoot does not like that because she just wants to get him to have kits and to make uh, Thundercry jealous, which isn't working because Tawny Spark and Thundercry are friends and don't care. Um, speaking of that family tree, Maple Tuft, who is uh, Tawny Spark and Poppy Pelt's uh, mother, I almost said older sister, which is completely wrong, mother, she is mates with Bramble Pelt, who I already drew. I think she She's marked as light ginger, um, pale ginger. I think that's a little too pale, but I like the color. She's cute. She's great. She's everyone's mom. That's pretty much... She... I mentioned her in the doc video of, like, she and Burma Pelt were the ones who took care of them after Beach Ear passed away, and... That's, I like, I stand by that. She's everyone's mom. She just, she takes care of everyone. That's her role. That's, that's all she does. She's just the mom. She, she's very good at her job. She's the first of the dwellers, and she's the oldest. She is, like, she's grandma age for warriors, which is not that old. Um, next is Frostshine, who is... Thundercry and Snowfoot's daughter, only child. 
I like Frostshine. I mentioned her in the video um, about Lake Colony. I was thinking of real the name, and I couldn't for a minute. Um, because she's the one who always wants to be a mentor. She has very high expectations and wants to meet them all the time. And uh, Kyra Fang is really good at letting her down really gently and being like, Hey, is it, no one is expecting anything of you. You're great and you're fine. Um, she's really sweet and I'm going to go into Thunder Cries time because I want to talk about this. Um, she and her mate, White Thistle, who uh, is at the end of the speed bank because he's, I'll talk about him more later, but they had a kit together and that kit passed away. Um, they had a daughter and she ended up passing away and she takes it really, really hard. Like she went from being kind of just like combative in a fun and a sometimes serious way to she is an emotional wreck and it's really interesting colorful background characters uh thunder cry we're pretty much done with him but there's not a lot to say he's he's a guy that's it i'll talk about him later um thrift thorn this is money mass sister and she is also the daughter of Coyote Fang, so she looks like her father. I only realized that when trying to remember anything about her. Um, she, she's great. <laughs> she's interesting. Um, but she would be more interesting if I wrote anything for her. I pretty much just have that she likes drama and that she's kind of, um, doesn't know how to control herself around uh, other ladies because she is a huge lesbian and just and I quote in my notes drools over all the handsome mollies yeah so that that's pretty much all I have for her it, lesbian she is the, the, the lesbian of the, the colony um, and she's just kind of the cool aunt for money masses Money Mask kids who Money Mask and Thundercry have a great relationship, and um, a little funny thing about her headshot is I wanted to draw everyone in like neutral expressions because I feel like I messed up all the expressions uh, last time I did the introduction charts where it was like some of them are happy, some of them are not. So I wanted to do everyone neutrally, and she looks so angry because she does. When she has like a, a resting neutral face, it just looks angry because she's positive all of the time. And Money Mask is great. She is a lot like Maple Tuft as like just being really sweet and protective over the young. And but she differs in like she's a lot more introspective and observant. And that makes her and Thunder Kai interesting. Doc, the um, the protagonist, I have a hard time mentioning things that I didn't talk about last time uh, in her own video. She She's just, there's not a lot to mention. She's just perfectly neutral. Uh, she doesn't want to spend her time dealing with drama or fighting. And she her plot is more like a murder mystery who've done it kind of thing. Um... Which is enjoyable, I much prefer that because I think that warriors-esque stories are just mostly driven by um, fighting and it's okay to spend some time on things that might not be as, quote, interesting, unquote. Ember, the protagonist I originally wrote, but he's not anymore. Um, Good boy, spunky boy, fast, speedy, all the time boy. He uh, he has his grandmother as his um, dweller, mentor, whatever you want to call it. And he has a really good relationship with her. He uh, not necessarily is very close to his dad. And 
if I could redraw this headshot, I would, but it's too late. <laughs> and I'm not that proud of it. I like, look at all him in the doc video because he looks way cuter in that. Um, it was, it was the eyes. There was something wrong with the eyes and the, the chin, like the muzzle, not good. Um, I know these three are going to be unnamed in the story, but I have to give them the first part of the name, otherwise this doesn't make sense. Ryer, uh, she is, um, she was raised alongside Doc and Ember. She's a little bit younger, um. Mostly their mother, uh, Money Mask, was the one who, like, gave them, um, uh, milk because she was currently feeding. And, uh, Briar becomes Doc's, um, mate. Those two are very cute together. Uh, she is just an adventurous person and she likes to spend her, her afternoons coming back and telling Doc all of the exciting things that she did. Um, her sister, Branch, is, uh, kind of the opposite. In a lot of ways. Uh, well, she's straight, and she, which is one, and she also is uh, not as adventurous, uh, but she does like to climb trees and cliffs, and she's just slow while Briar is kind of like a go-go-go kind of girl. And I like having them be like that kind of opposites, but very, very great together. Branch is cute. She looks like her mother, um, except can have a neutral looking face. And I did change the browns a little bit and the grays to be just a little bit closer to golden, I would say. I don't know. I like, we need, we need more calico cats and she's perfect. I love her. Uh, who's next? Flower. I know we're not showing him yet, but Flower is the most relatable cat in all of the colonies. He is um, very easily tired. He's a bit slow when it comes to learning everything about the lore and stuff. Um, and he, he just he gets overwhelmed like a little uh, Nintendogs puppy. You teach him too much and he is like, okay, give me a minute. Uh, and he likes to stay in and around camp. He would be a really good guardian because of that. <laughs> um, but that's mostly because he doesn't want to go very far. And he uh, is just a, he's just a sweet boy. Just, I very much find him relatable and enjoyable. White Thistle, going to our retirees, is not old. He's just blind. He was born naturally blind he this wasn't like an injury and he did have a successful career as a dweller and he was on his way to becoming either a, a hunter or a guardian i haven't quite decided i'm thinking he was gonna become a um hunter but he almost lost his life falling off of a um cliff into camp because it's you kind of the camp is like, you go down into it, and the walls come up, and it's very thin, and it's really, if you don't have all your senses, it's probably, it's really easy to just fall, and he almost lost his life, and he chooses to just hang around in camp instead, like, it was his choice, he retired for a reason, because he didn't want to worry his mate, and he's great. Um, Cliff Claw, previously Cliff Fang. She retires immediately <laughs> in the beginning of River Chasing. At the first gathering, we hear that she is retired. Um, she is the old crotchety lady. Um, I say crotchety, but she's really not. Um, she's, she's great. She retired because she felt she was too old and weak to make the travels. And she wanted to give it to someone younger. And Coyote Fang was definitely younger and all for it. Uh, Coyote Fang also has uh, the suffix uh, of claw. I thought that was really funny. Um, not intentional. Uh, it, it just happened. 
And she also has a limp on her front paw, but that never stopped her. Like, she didn't become a retiree because she was, um, disabled. Like, she was still a, a leader and disabled. She just was old and was like, I don't want to walk anymore. Um, yeah, so that's the whole colony. Now, the reason why this is a month late, or longer, I'm putting this out after, um, so this is probably going on on the 12th, I think, is the day, uh, is because I recorded this audio on Monday of when this was supposed to go out, uh, two weeks ago, uh, and then I didn't check if the audio had recorded i just believed it had and then when i put it in the editing i put the wrong audio in went haha oh that's funny i still have time because i like to put the audio out uh put like the audio in the video and then export it out on tuesday which not doing anymore hopefully and it was the wrong audio. It was the audio for my flame paw video, and I went, "Oh, that's that's silly. I'll just um put the right audio in. I guess I didn't download it properly or whatever." Um, so I put it in, and then I went to watch the video, and there was no audio, and I went, "Oh, okay," and I'm irrationally angry about it because I thought that I was I was doing it right. And by the time I had finished, it was already, like, 5 o'clock. And I was like, that's... It's way too late. I'm too angry. I just stopped and I went, <laughs> do it next week. And then I realized, because I looked down on my notes and it was like, hey, next week you're going to be doing the video about, um, River, a Starless Clan. And I went, oh. Okay. Push it again. Now we're here. On top of that, I had got in this week this this video a week in advance because I took two weeks to do the doc video, which I didn't need to, um, because all I, I was just too lazy to record audio, which is mostly why these videos are late. Uh, but for this case, it was because I took like three weeks to do the drawing alone because I was having some really really bad art block, and I. I don't know what to say about that because it sucked. It sucked so bad. And I have never been so angry at a video because I like making YouTube videos. I think it's really fun. I was so angry at this video. And I talked about this in the last Tuesday talk where I was like, I'm just irrationally angry about it. Um because it took it just it took so long. Like I was doing two of these at a time. I literally was on a grind to finish the whole thing, but then I waited to the very end to do White Thistle and Cliff Claw, like, because they were at the end of the list, but I had, like, stopped it while I was already prepared to do them and just put it off for another day, which I don't know why, but I can't do art in that sitting, but, like, so this video took a long time to make, and I'm upset, and... I'm sorry it took this long. Uh, next week we're probably doing an emotions chart or I'm talking about something different. I don't know. It could be anything at this point. I don't know what's happening with my schedule. My notes are question marks right now. Um, so yeah, eventually I'll talk about how what I think about River, which will not being a Tuesday talk, I think. I think I'll write, like, a genuine script and then put that out or whatever, but this video is already pretty long, and I will get to this later. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. I'm very sorry.